हेलो माई डियर फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल हाई पॉइंट आई होप यू आर फॉलोइंग माई वीडियोज एंड दोस्त और सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल थैंक यू फॉर दैम एंड आई होप दैट यू आर डूइंग ग्रेट इन योर लाइफ सो फार वी हैव फिनिश्ड द ओवर व्यू ऑफ द हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंग्लिश लिटरेचर सो लाइक आई सेट वी विल बी लुकिंग आफ्टर ईच एंड एवरी एज सेपरेटली एंड वील बी लुकिंग एट द हिस्टोरिकल फैक्ट एंड ऑल्सो द मेजर लिटरेरी कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड मेजर लिटरेरी पर्सन एसोसिएटेड विद ईच uh each age in the history of english literature so we are starting with the anglo norman period in this video so why i am doing why i am starting with the anglo norman period prior to this age we have anglo saxon age but you know in the overview itself have i have done pretty much uh, detailly about uh, the anglo saxon period but i'll be doing a separate video for bear wolf about its uh, you know various uh, things related to it and also the story line of bear wolf and other things related to it so i uh, will be doing that in next in another video uh, but in here we are going to learn about the anglo norman period which is from 1066 to 1340 so before that i hope you have visited my website www.highpoint.info for more contents related to english literature or for more study materials related to ugc net english you can obviously go and visit my website known as www.highpoint.in where you will get more than 900 plus audio lectures and also um, more than 300 plus downloadable pdfs and also previous and practice question papers which you can attend live in the website and know your mark instantly so use these facilities to move forward systematically uh, to achieve your ugc net or jrf or you can uh, whatsapp or message to the number given below in the screen so let's move on to the major content of this particular video let's go so friends let's start our main content of the video so like i said we will be looking at the anglo norman period in detail what are some of the historical facts happened in this uh in this period the literary trends of this period and the major authors uh, of the period and their major works so i won't be discussing every other author of the age and their every other works but i will mention some of the major authors and their uh, works as well so anglo norman period it is from 1066 in the from the year 1066 to 1340 so you have to remember that anglo norman period comes after anglo saxon period so about anglo saxon period i think in that uh, overview itself i have uh, shared uh, pretty much uh, details about the age if you want more you can obviously ask for it comment that in the comment section if you want a special video about a special section about a special class about anglo saxon period i'll be doing bio wolf alone in another video but uh, for now we are going to discuss about the anglo norman period and its historical events and the literary trends major authors and their works in detail okay about important individual works i'll be doing individual videos as well so don't worry about that so anglo norman period is from 1066 to 1314 so up until 1066 that year it was anglo norman period uh, sorry anglo saxon period in the uh, in the celtic england so england was before uh, anglo saxon england was celtic and uh, with the invasion of anglo saxons uh, england uh, became anglo saxon then after anglo norman invasion happened in 1066 then that period came to known as uh, the anglo norman period and their ruling their uh, i mean their uh, ruling extended up to the year 1340 okay so the anglo norman period Uh, starts from the norman conquest to the middle of the 14th century like i said already the literature of that time was written in anglo norman the french dialect spoken by the norman invaders we have already seen this if you are following my videos you must have heard this point already that you know during the time of uh, anglo norman period english was not the you uh, know prominent language or language of the law or language of the court or language of the uh, you know any you know uh, the, even the loyalties 
or the court people or the rulers or the upper caste people they were not talking in english because you know english was not popular in this time in this period anglo norman period but the language of the invaders normans normans were the invaders so obviously their language their language was anglo norman anglo norman uh, was a french dialect so anglo norman was a french dialect this uh, conquerors were i mean these invaders were french or they have a french lineage and you know they were speaking a french dialect known as anglo norman so this particular language of the rulers or language of the conquerors or the language of the victorious people who actually ruled over england during this particular period their language became popular their language became the law or language of the uh, you know rules regulations law court uh, even language of literature english was actually pushed to the lower strata so only the illiterate people those who don't have any faculty of uh, you know writing illiterate people mainly spoke, uh, you know spoke english and english you know we cannot find any much literary activities uh, happening in english language as well because all the popular people all the influential people all the powerful people they all are actually speaking and using anglo norman for that reason english was uh, you know less po popular during this age of uh, the anglo norman period okay i go i think that that point is pretty much clear so please do remember that i have seen questions asking that uh, anglo norman uh, is a dialect of which language it is french okay so please remember that so these norman conquerors they were originally of vikings who settled in the north east of france in the early 10th century so this basically these norman conquerors they were pirates they were pirates they were originally they were vikings they belong to the group of vikings and these vikings once uh, some people of uh, of this group they settled in the north west of france in the early 10th century so in the early 10th century what happened uh, some people these vikings they settled in in the north west of france in the early 10th century so basically these normal people they are pirates originally so they won't settle anywhere but by the early 10th century they settled in the north west france uh, in that territory they settled and they while you know as time passes they intermarried so there must be some people already in the north west of france they settled there and they intermarried and mixed with the native french population that's how they got the french dialect they they imbibed the language so they intermarried and they mixed with the native french population but they still retained some of their qualities such as fearlessness their names they retained this norman people they retained their names their uh, some of the characteristics they still retained even though they inter they intermarried and they mixed up with the native french population then what happened they are known as normans so these people who actually settled down in the uh, northwest of france and they mixed with the native french population that group of people are known as normans or they are also known as uh, men of normandy and their land became known as the land of normanny or north men okay these people who actually mixed with the french population and who settled in the first century first uh, i mean in the early part of the 10th century when these viking people when they settled in the north west of france and they intermarried and mixed with the native population and uh, uh, what happened and their land and these people are known as normans and or men of normandy and the place or the land in which they uh, they resided they that place became uh, or there that place came to known as the land of normandy or northern men okay by the middle of the 11th century normand normandy became one of the most powerful states in christendom so in christendom or in christianity in the christian community itself these people they, by the 11th century itself normandy became one of the powerful states in christendom normans invaded england in 1066 so 11th century means 
1066 means in the initial years of 11th century itself Normans invaded England and uh, under the leadership of William Duke of Normandy uh, so he was their leader so see England was invaded by Normans in the year 1066. Do remember that. It is the initial years of 11th century. So, by 11th century itself, this Normandy became a very powerful state in, in terms of Christianity or in terms of, you know, if it is powerful in terms of Christianity or religion, then it must be powerful in many other terms. That's why they got the conference to invade England in 1066 uh, under the leadership of William, Duke of Normandy. So, when some other party uh, comes to invade our country, we won't be simply sitting and watching, right? There will be a battle going on or there will be a war happening. So, that invasion, when William of William Duke of Normandy, under his leadership, when Norman people uh, started to invade or they tried to invade England, a battle happened. That battle is Battle of Hastings. Please remember this name, Battle of Hastings. So, their invasion, their uh, try of invasion led to a battle, Battle of Invasion, sorry, Battle of ha Hastings uh, between whom? These Norman people and Anglo-Saxon England. Anglo-Saxon England and uh, this French speaking as French dialect speaking William uh, I mean man of Normandy or Normans or Norman people they fought uh, between and uh, you know who emerged as victorious French people emerged as victorious that's how they started to rule England from 1066 please remember this name battle of hastings immediately when you hear battle of hastings you have to remember whom you have to remember that first of all you have to remember that it belongs to the year or it belongs to the age the anglo norman period of english history or english literary, literary history and it led to the uh, led to the uh, Norman invasion successful and they started to rule, rule over England uh, from 1066. Remember that. So, he, William Duke of Normandy was their leader, Norman's leader. So, William naturally, William of Normandy, he became king of Normandy. And with this, Anglo-Saxon phase of English history came to an end. Okay. So, another you know, shift in politics actually happening. So, that shift in politics or change in politics or tran uh, transformation happened in politics actually will affect every other sphere of the, sphere of the society, literature, culturally, so socially, politically, economically. It must have affected that impacts we will see next. So, the impacts of the Norman conquest. What are the some of the most important impacts of Norman conquest. So, because of Norman conquest, you know, it actually radically changed English culture, law, language and character because, you know, it was totally different. Norman people, they were totally different from the Anglo-Saxon England people. So, their culture was different, their law, regulations, even their language uh, was different. Everything in character was different uh, from English speaking community of England that was so far there. So, you know, it actually radically, tremendously changed the English culture, law, language and character. So, what was the, from literature point of view, what was the main change happened? French became the language of law and old English became confined to the lower classes. Okay. So, it was old English. English was not, uh, you know, uh, in its uh, modern form during that time. And French became the language of law. See, French, I mean, Anglo-Norman, which was a French dialect. Actually, that became the language of law in every other important spheres. Especially in literature, law, regulations, court, loyalties. I mean, royal people or upper standard people, upper class people, creamy layer of the society. Everyone actually using this language. Why? Simply because... It is the language of the rulers. So, everywhere it happened like, like that. When England uh, came in India and they conquered India and they uh, ruled over India for you know two centuries and more, what happened? English became more prominent. All other vernacular languages, even Sanskrit, pushed or you know pushed it to the sides. 
that will happen every other territory in every other time it happened like that so french dialect that means anglo norman became the language of every other important peers or every other uh, you know uh, situation every other important things were done in this language so the, what what happened to old english old english became confined to the lower class okay and the next change was that it, it actually the um, the rule of normans introduced a new feudal system and society became actually hierarchized so uh, the anglo norman conquest introduced a new feudal system to the england to the uh, you know english speak speaking society of england and you know it was unknown so far unknown to them and the society became very much hierarchized and as far as language is concerned 10000 french words found their way into english you know n number of words we could say more than 10000 french words found their way into english because in the influence of this french dialect anglo norman was so intense that you know it actually uh, took every other section or every other uh, you know situation in every other institution was you know in working in this language so it must be happening right so these words french words found their ways into english 10000 more than 10000 now chronicles religious didactic writing poetry and drama were the popular forms so we could see that chronicles religious and didactic religious means you know christian mostly related to christian religion writings didactic means instructional kind of writing so you know about morality about codes of conduct about etiquettes uh, about you know suggestions or instructions for good life or being a good person so such kind of such didactic writings were there poetry and drama were also there as popular forms now let's see some of the major uh, chroniclers latin chronicles so chronicles were mainly written in latin it was not at all written in english or any of these forms any of these literary forms we could see that very little or no literary production we could see in uh, english literature i mean in english language as well so mainly literature was written in anglo norman or a latin or any other classical language see simon of durham who lived from 1092 to 1126 and geoffrey of monmouth so he is very important okay geoffrey of monmouth uh, lived from uh, 110 to i mean it must be 1110 10 to 1155 and walter map uh, lived from 1140 to 1210 and matthew paris lived from 1200 to 1259 So these are some of the Latin chroniclers belongs to Anglo Norman period. Please remember at least Geoffrey of Monmouth and Simon of Durham because I have seen these people's names in the question paper. Okay, Simon of Durham and Geoffrey of Monmouth. So and Walter Map as well as uh, Matthew Parrish. These are some of the Latin chroniclers of uh, Anglo Norman period. Now Anglo Norman Brett. So Bruts, what are Bruts? Bruts related to the legendary history of Britain, which tells the story of Brutus, descendants of Aeneas. So basically, the legendary people who actually we could see in the history of Britain, such a legendary story and legendary people and their stories we could see as in the form of Bruts. Bruts actually legendary history of Britain. which tells the story of brutus 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 is considered as the descendant of aeneas and uh, brats anglo norman brats mainly celebrated the deeds of knightly heroes knightly heroes heroic uh, deeds of great knights and all celebrated in brats so these are some of the major brats versus uh, roman de brat roman de brat i have seen uh, this word i mean this name as and lemons bread as well in some of the questions uh, choices okay so if you know some of the names and you know the wor work belong to a certain period of in the history of english literature then it that will make easier for you to segregate the options even though you don't know the correct meaning so that's the uh, main point that you have to remember these names 
okay if you remember the names it will be very easy for you to segregate the uh, options and arrive at a correct answer if you don't know even the correct answer okay so ways is uh, roman de bread which actually came out in 1155 is one of the major uh, anglo norman breads and lemon's bread uh, which came out in 1200 is also considered as one of the major one and harley's bread is also there so vases roman de bread is a, in in this particular bread we could see that a third of the verses were about king arthur so mainly roman de bread is about king arthur so roman de bread is mainly about king arthur lemon's bread begins with the fall of troy and it is about brutus okay brutus is the is, is the descendant of aeneas who found uh actually who, who is considered as the founder of britain so uh, lemon's bread it begins with the fall of troy and it is about brutus and we also have the harley's bread as the one of the main uh, anglo norman breads here so please remember main uh, breads name roman de bread lemon's bread and the harley's bread now now let's see which are some uh, some of the religious and didactic writers and there are some peculiarities of religious and didactic writers of anglo norman period and see religious and didactic writings they were divided into four sections according to the aims actually there were four types of religious and didactic writings okay and it is divided into four sections according to the aims so must be really even if it is religious or didactic writing it will be talking about something about virtues right or morality or moral values or you know religious values it might be so, talking about some values so according to the aim that it uh, uh, possess it is divided into four sections so first of all uh, a religious or didactic writing must be uh, to teach biblical history okay so one aim of religious or didactic writings uh, is to teach biblical history so to teach to teach the people about history history of bible or the biblical history that is there in the bible in order to teach that that is the aim first aim so that is one section of religious and didactic writing the second section is to exhort to holier living to convey and to promote holier living how you can live virtuous that kind of aim was also there in religious and didactic writing so that forms the second section the third one is uh, is connected with the religious life of women see about morality of women how women should live a virtuous life so such things are uh, another section such uh, i mean the third section is connected with the religious life of women which also comes under religious and didactic writing the fourth section is with the virgin cult and mysticism so about virgin mary so the writings related to virgin cult are about virgin mary and things related to her and mysticism forms the fourth section in religious and didactic writing so these are the four sections we could see uh, according to the aims according to the aim that it possesses it is divided into four sections first one is to teach biblical history then to exhort uh, holier living which is the second section third one is it is connected with the religious life of women and the fourth section is with the virgin cult and mysticism so and in we in in anglo norman period we could also see the earliest attempt of translating bible so the earliest if you see the history of translation of bible earliest translation of the bible was done by sanson d natwell natwell okay so the earliest translation it may not be to english but the earliest translation of bible from latin was made by Sanson D Natural Sanson D Natural please remember his name uh, the earliest attempt of translation of the bible now which are some of the poets and their major works that we are going to discuss philippe d thorn so philippe d thorn is one of the major poets of anglo norman period and reginald of canterbury uh, then we have uh, hilarius then uh, benoit t saint mor so these names are actually anglo norman french kind of names because most of the writers were them and uh, in it were all these 
you know works poems were written verses were written in anglo norman language itself so philippe de thown then who has written livere de creatures then reginald of canterbury has written the legend of saint malchus hilarius is another poet and benoit de saint amour has written roman de troyes they remember this this name roman de troyes roman de troyes i have seen it in it in question okay benoit de saint amour roman de troyes from benoit d saint amour has written roman d troy remember that so main poets were philip d thown he has written livere d creatures creatures reginald of canterbury has written the legend of saint malchus then hilarius benoit d saint amour has written roman d troy so these are the major poets of uh, anglo norman period so about a drama we have some of the names of the drama le jo d adam so these names are anglo norman names it is in that dialect of french so basically maybe my pronunciation will have some uh, problems so i i beg your pardon for that so le jo or le jo d adam which is the english translation of this title is the play of adam the play of adam then saint day resurrection resurrection of the savior le je de saint nicholas the play of saint nicholas so these are some of the major drama or uh, we could say major plays or it is more or less they are actually morality or you know religious kind of drama we could say uh, so these are some of the major drama of the age some romances were the sage of malay remember this name and earl of talos earl of talos came out in the 14th century and emir emir uh, also we can see emir in 14th century see remember these names these romances names i have seen them several times in the question papers the sage of malay especially the earl of talos and uh, emir i have seen them couple of times in uh, previous question paper the sage of malay the earl of talos emir so these are some of the uh, romances that we could see so that's all about uh, uh, about the major literary activities happening in uh, what in 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 anglo norman period so about anglo norman period first of all you have to remember the uh, remember the time period from 1066 to 1340 please remember battle of hastings and please remember anglo norman is the was the major language and this was a Uh, french dialect and uh, english was pushed to the lower strata of the society and also every other literary activities were happening in uh, english not in english language but in anglo norman language and we have to remember major trends latin chronicles were there uh, religious and didactic writings were there drama poetry and romances were there please remember if you uh, you know if you take down uh, these uh, things as a note in a book then that will be very helpful for you in you know more than simply sitting and uh, hearing and watching this video uh, it will be very helpful for you too if you have uh, you know written down the points but if you have any more doubts and suggestions and if you want any questions and queries please do mention that in the comment section i'll be waiting for that and uh, you know for more details you know i have detailedly held this all these topics Uh, in my website www.highpoint.in and uh, if you want more you can obviously whatsapp me i have given my number as well so and if you like the video please share this video to your friends and those who are needed and uh, please subscribe to my channel and uh, you know if you want me to make any other contents that will be helpful for you do that in the comment section please mention that in the comment section and thank you for watching my video let's meet in the next video until then bye bye